I will continue to defend Polarium against the lot of complaints. All right, that, that's that's kind of pushing it. You don't have to defend Polarium, I think. And before any of you guys get it twisted, I'm not defending Polarium. I'm just saying the game's good. But that you should be up in arms against Polarium for a lot of the things that they do. But I want to remind you guys that the game is good, right? Raid Shadow Legends is a good game. It's not perfect. It has its faults. But Polarium corporate BS aside, the game is good. A lot of us wouldn't be still playing it if it wasn't a fun game. And then you could also argue like, oh, it's it's fun because it's got, um, you know, addictive elements to it. Yeah, that's true. I'm not going to deny that and be blind to it. I'm not, you know, pushing for you guys to, you know, change your mind or whatever and say, oh, yeah, no, Polarium is perfect and everything. No, that's not what I'm trying to say. I'm just trying to remind you guys that one, it's a fucking video game. And two, it is fun, right? There's a good game under this, right? The developers of this game, not all of them, but a good majority of, majority of them, I would like to believe, that that they do like the game, that they do love the game that they've created, that it's a fun game that everybody can enjoy. I still like the game, right? I've been playing Raid before I was a content creator. Let's see what this guy says. This post was from two years ago. He says, let's see how many downvotes this post gets. And I'm the same way. Let's see how many dislikes this this post or this video can get. Uh, not that it's going to matter, because if you guys didn't know, dislikes do not matter. They really don't on YouTube. But if it makes you feel better about yourself and if you think you're doing something, um, go ahead and dislike. You're not really doing anything. In fact, you're doing the opposite. You're helping me. I like how he pointed this out because he's aware that a lot of people aren't going to agree, just like a lot of you people aren't going to agree with me. I enjoy Hydra. I think Awakening is a really cool system that with a, buy, uh, a slight bit of economic change, it could be amazing. The arena is a decent place for most players. Yeah, d decent is a good word. App description. Any speeding up than Tavern is not necessary. Again, two years ago, I don't agree with this. I mean, it wasn't like the hugest problem, but I do like the instant upgrades. Doesn't take very long from a guy who got 10k points in one day in the Tavern. 2x speed is plenty to play the game. Imagine if it was 1x. <laughs> we don't have to imagine it. I accidentally, sometimes I accidentally press the, the speed multiplier and it goes back down to one. And I'm like, why is Doom Tower taking forever? Free to play players get plenty of recourses, resources, I think he was trying to say, without needing to spend. Yeah, I mean, free to play for PVE is doable, just with some time. The current energy system is essential for the game to function. That's a okay that's a that's a statement and finally we don't need a book farm that is a statement i disagree with that is the opposite of the truth we do need a book farm i think a book farm would be a really good thing for the lifespan of the game and not being able to book every champion is one of the few things that makes the game more strategic borderline you guys tell me what you think about that i don't agree with that i think it makes it kind of annoying to have a great champion only to not be able to fully optimize them because you don't have the books, but your options are either wait or pedaling back to Polarium's antics. You just buy the books. All of these are my opinions as a free to play player who's been playing for a year. It's an optimistic outlook, right? A lot of people won't agree with it because a lot of people don't want to have this conversation. Most people want to complain about the game. Most people thrive complaining about the game. It's, it's easier to complain about something than to see the good. Humans, our complainers just in general. Humans in general will find something to complain about. If there's nothing to complain about, you're just not gonna like it. I'm not mad about that. That's not new to me. That's just a human thing to do. But the game is good. If you're looking at it just as a game, but a lot of people don't look at it just as a game anymore. People forget that this is just a game and people get so heavily invested, emotionally charged into the game that it's no longer just a video game for them. Yes, of course, we don't need any changes since we've been doing without them for years, but it is difficult to argue that the current Tavern UI is pleasant or efficient to use or that running 16 keys on Doom Tower boss adds anything gameplay-wise over running it once. True, because if you can already fully farm the Dark Fae at 120, for an example, 100%, I feel like you shouldn't have to sit there for, I don't know, another 15 minutes doing 16 keys, right? You should just be able to instant farm and take that, right? Because there's no real, di like, it's not like we're sitting on our phones or on our computers watching the run the entire time. No, we walk away and we go do something, right? So Polarium not giving us that quick, quick battle for Doom Tower is kind of annoying. So I understand, and this was two years ago, so this post still 
you know is relevant today because it's uh, it hasn't nothing's changed with doom tower right i agree that some of these common requests are not really about making the game better just giving us a buff and calling them quality of life features more books and energy isn't quality quality of life but rsl is more than four years it's perfectly reasonable to want and expect polish from a game at this stage in its life cycle a mature game should not just be good overall it should minimize pain points true in many ways RSL is very good, but in some ways, it's still bad for no clear reason. And I don't think there is not a clear reason. I think a lot of things are, from a business corporate standpoint, designed to be a certain way because it helps Polarium's bottom line. And again, we're not mad about it. Why? Because that's just the nature of the beast, right? But again, it's a game. You can choose to play it. You can choose not to play it. You can choose to participate in certain areas of the game and participate or, or not participate in certain areas of the game. You can choose how invested you're going to be in the game. And that is also going to help you dictate how upset you're going to be with the game or how not upset you're going to be with the game. However, the other argument to that is if you're somebody who actually like really loves the game, you're probably more than likely going to be the type of person who has a lot of things to say. Not exactly a complaint, but more of like a passionately charged concern because you want better for the game, right? If we don't say anything, and I've said this before in so many other videos, if we don't say anything, Polarium isn't going to do anything. If we don't complain, it's not gonna get changed. The squeaky wheel gets the oil. I had somebody comment on that video that I talked about, if we don't complain, we, we complain all the time and nothing ever changes. Well, I, I beg to differ because, you know, a few things I can think of, for an example, are clan boss, right? So for many of you, you probably won't remember, actually for a lot of you guys, because I do have a lot of end gamers, um, people who've been playing for a long time since like 2019 in my comments. But for those of you who don't know, clan boss used to be that you had to fight your clan mates over doing damage because it wasn't infinite. You had to have everybody do exactly like 70.3 million damage and then people had to leave the fight. If not, then there wasn't enough health for other people in your clan to do damage to the clan boss and get chests. And so that was a point of contention or the damage counter, right? We Before that, Polarium didn't have a damage counter. Guess what? We complained about that, and now there's a damage counter. People complained about quick battles in Clan Boss. Guess what? Now we have quick battles in Clan Boss, right? These things don't happen instantly. They take a long time to do, but you guys get the point. Complaining, and you know, there, there's a way to complain. There's a way to express your concern and talk about it in a way that doesn't sound bitch moany and complaining about it. Um, although, it's kind of hard to do when you're, again, passionately driven because th the line can be blurred very easily. And sometimes me myself can often fall onto the other side and just turn to straight complaining. But I always have to remind myself, and again, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not perfect, I'm human. One, I, I get a lot of things wrong in the game and and, uh, and I make mistakes, you know, and that's totally fine. And I, I, can, I can live with that as long as I'm constantly trying to be better. As long as you are trying to constantly get better as well, you know, I can't fault you. And so if you're complaining about anything in Raid, I think go ahead and keep complaining because it's good that you're saying something. It's better than saying nothing because when people stop saying anything, good or bad, especially bad, people stop caring. I dated this one girl a while back. I love my wife, by the way. I dated this one girl uh, back in 2013 and, you know, it was pretty, pretty cool. I'm not going to get too far into it, but it's just like it came to a point where I stopped complaining about a lot of the things that she was doing or wasn't doing right and finally she started asking me like well, what's up like are you like what what, what, are you, what are you what's going on and i was just like oh i don't care and she's like oh you don't care huh and i'm like yeah i don't care and she's like oh okay well i guess i guess you should just go find someone who who cares then and i'm just like okay and that kind of stuck with me as I got older, because I realized that when people stop caring, that is when the issue presents itself. If people stop caring about Raid, they're not going to say anything. So you want people to say something about Raid because these changes happen due to people saying anything, right? And that goes beyond just the game. What are some other examples? People were complaining a long time ago, 2019, 2020, that there wasn't anything to do in Raid. People were complaining there was nothing to do in Raid. People would log into their dailies and then that was it. There was no Hydra. There wasn't a lot of PvP stuff. Yeah, you had Classic Arena. There was no Tag Team Arena. There was no Live Arena. 
There was no Hydra Clash. There was no CVC. There were hardly any events. A 2x was like the only thing that would happen for Ancients. I think they did it for Voids and Sacreds, but that wasn't pretty often and they never announced it. You would just wake up one day, boom. And there was no light. There was no light up thing. That was another thing that people complained about, that there was no way to really tell without uh, Chosen basically telling you it's a 2x or like going into the summoning portal. There was no light coming, emanating, bursting out of the summoning portal, letting you guys know at first glance that, hey, it's a 2x. But um, people were complaining there was nothing to do. So progressive chances weren't a thing. 10x events weren't a thing. Those are things that people complained about, like, oh, the summoning pool is X, Y, and Z. And eventually Polarium was like, okay, we hear you guys complaining about that, sharing your, your concerns about this. Let's do something. Now, of course, they didn't do it in the way that we wanted to, monkey's paw. But they gave us something, right? A progressive chance in a 10x is technically better than nothing. And we can go on to the ends of the earth about it, like empowering champions. Now they have fusions back to back where before we would go months without doing anything. But it's just like you can't have it every single way. And it really doesn't matter what you do. People are always going to complain about something. But again, um, the point of this video, remember, it's just a video game. So remember that the game is good, right? There are some good things about it. I, I, I challenge you. I challenge you guys to really sit there and think about why it is that you got into Raid. What about Raid keeps you in here? If it's not for the investments that you've already put into raid like a lot of you guys will say like oh i've already invested this much into raid i'm still playing raid because i, I spent x y z dollars some of you guys might say it's the community for me i still enjoy doing hydra i, I know that i i just leave it on auto for the most part but sometimes i feel like trying out new teams and i don't i don't do this all the time on screen like the other day i did a rare only normal hydra team and i thought that was kind of fun there are components of the game that i still find fun and um, again, most of it is community, like talking with my clan mates or talking in the game chat, talking with you guys about the game is really fun to me as well. It's engaging and it gives me a social component that honestly, I don't find in other games. And I, I've talked to a few other people that played other games and they've said the same thing, like, oh, they tried Dragonair or they tried Watcher of Realms, but the social component just isn't there. Now I haven't tried those games. I mean, I, hold on, let me, let me backtrack. I did try those games for a day and it wasn't really my thing. I just wasn't I just wasn't into it. I enjoy really cool champions that come out that look fun and I like playing with them like Thor, Marius. As a year 2 free to player, I do agree with most of the points other than a few. Hydra is pretty boring. The rewards are low quality for the difficult time required. Fights can last over 30 to 40 minutes after getting Mithrala. You're basically doing them for a bit of clan gold. Some gear completely irrelevant unless you're plat arena grinder with one to two um, with one to two soul stones. We definitely don't get enough books. I understand that free to players should not be able to instantly book every champion they acquire, but even with the resources you mentioned, most of which don't help, Faction Wars helps you with one to two champions. Uh, no free to play free to pre, free to play player will be gold tier in 3d uh, 3v3 arena which i don't think so because i i know a lot of free to play players who are in gold 3v3 most clans can't pur purchase lego books that's right you have to be a certain level after two years of playing i can't use 60 percent of the legendaries that I, I acquire because of books i understand where you're coming from i believe hydro rewards are definitely worth it and partly tie into your second point as it gives you clan gold and clan XP. I think he's trying to be optimistic and I can totally respect that and I, I want to get behind this, but at the same time, um, this the rewards back then for Hydra were pretty shit. And again, we complained about it, they made it better, relatively, right? We have more than just, what do you call it? Stone skin and protection and some points. If the game is that good and you strongly support Polarium, why are you fully free to play and not at least the low spender? Actions speak louder than words. I see his point, right? Because if you fully support, if you want to support a company, then you do so with your money. For an example, Monster Hunter Wilds is about to come out. I'm buying the top tier fucking deluxe pack or whatever that is called, the pre-order. I'm buying that because I support the game and everything that it has to offer. And like, I have a, a track record of enjoying Monster Hunter World. I, I like, I've, I bought that. I've been playing Monster Hunter since I was a, a kid in middle school. Devil May Cry, Warhammer, Black Myth Wukong, Fallout. Like there's a plethora of games that you constantly buy over and over again. Like Dragon's Dogma, the first one, not the second one. I bought like five different times and I beat them five different times on different systems. But it's just like, I, I get where he's coming from, right? If you support something, a business, then support it with your money. That's one way to do it, right? But the other side to this is just like, sometimes not everybody has that type of disposable income to just give to Polarium. And, uh, you know, 
again, it, it, it's a result of the company. I guess I'm trying to say like you have to pick and choose the companies. Polarium is a company owned by Aristocrat or something like that. And they're basically a gambling company or they're, they're a company that works with slot machines, creating slot machines, something like that. Somebody fix me on that. But it's just like, do you really want to give your money to that or a game developer who's going to receive that and know, hey, they really like this game. They really like the way that we're doing this. Let's continue to pump out good content. Now, I'm not saying every game developer is like that, but but you know you, you know what I mean? You kind of get the point. Like if you're supporting Polarium and you're buying packs, at what point does a mobile game become worth it? Because I have spent thousands in Raid. And when I think about that, I think it's fucking ridiculous. A video game, a full on video game nowadays is like 60, 70 bucks, right? You know how many video games I could have bought with the money that I spent in Raid? And I'm not going to get into the what ifs of everything, but you guys see the comparison that I'm making. To me, the game is good. I like it. I wouldn't play it if I didn't. Exactly, right? It's a good game. We like it. It's in a much better place in the past years. I think it's better now than it was even two years ago. Most of the issues people bring up are simply quality of life for UI and huge time hardware electric uh, electricity savers. As they add more and more content, many of these things are becoming a necessity, not just to have something nice. Other aspects are that the game is going to take five years to barely complete a small portion of without thousands of dollars. It's true, right? You can skip a lot of the struggle that comes with the raid if you just spend money. Even just buying the gem pack, which is like 10 bucks a month, gives you a huge leg up over everybody else. And will make a lot of the issues that free to players face in the um, early growing stages of raid. One example, the tavern is in a vastly better place because the community begged for quality of life changes for years. It's light years ahead of where it started. Having the mentality that nothing else could be improved upon is the exact opposite of what got us to this point. Exactly. That's exactly the point. If you tell Polarium that everything is fucking good and fine and dandy, they're going to be like, okay, gotcha we're just gonna do our thing then but if you fight and show some resistance then they know there's an issue they know the people aren't happy that a revolution is right on the edge they don't want to deal with that so they're going to give you as they're going to give the dogs a bone basically so having that mentality that nothing else could be improved or should be improved is dangerous polarium charges a premium for their pixels and that, that that's putting it lightly right people expect them to keep earning that right to do so nothing wrong with that you know your first paragraph not everybody has money to spend in the game i like the game but i don't have money to spend on it one good for you unfortunately it's easy to see a vast majority don't agree exactly Hydra, after you get uh, Mithral, is barely used at all to save some extra clan coins. Majority of the players didn't bother either with manual or speed tune. Simplest approach was to throw in six champs, press auto. If RNG smiled on you, that's okay. Awakening is a good idea implemented in the worst way possible. One man defense has made life easier to many players who wanted to get Arbiter. Started as a niche idea, but stayed in time. Those who want a competitive environment can enjoy plat and occasionally high gold five. Tavern needs a rework. 2x speed is too slow even if you have resources because it requires abundance of time. The current energy system is okay if you can do the bare minimum and hoard the rest between fusions, but if you're not, you're screwed big time. I feel like they should bump the energy cap up, but I already know why they don't, because money. I'm free to play. Pretty much anything that Polarium does or doesn't do, money. Good job, Polarium, posting as a player. I know the Reddit ID is over several Polarium employees. He isn't one of them. Also, if you actually look at his post history, he's not one of a shill locking this comment. <laughs> hey, yeah, he's in my clan. Lord B4 is in my clan. I will continue to, to defend Polarium against a lot of complaints. All right, that, that's that's kind of pushing it. You don't have to defend Polarium, I, I think. And before any of you guys get it twisted, I'm not defending Polarium. I'm just saying the game's good, but that you should be up in arms against Polarium for a lot of the things that they do. But also remember, this is just a video game. I think this is the strangest thing you've said in the thread. The game's good, but it could be better. Most of the time, people are asking for changes because they like the game and they want to like it even more. Left your